there's something new brewing at Waterway Point here in Punggol. Today, we will visit Tesla's fifth supercharger in Singapore, newly opened this week. The closest lift lobby I found is Lobby B. Let's head down to that supercharger. The queue that you are looking for is level B2M, pillar C2. When you reach here, you're greeted by the Tesla sign above us. So a little bit of fun fact, this supercharger, this fifth one, creates an inverted T, an inverted Tesla logo in Singapore. So it was shared by Tesla Singapore's country manager just last night on Twitter. Inverted T, we now have our fifth supercharger. Every supercharger station in Singapore has three stalls, as you can see behind me. These three stalls are not all the same aligned. It's like Star Vista. One of them sticks out by the side. So with three stalls and five supercharger stations, we now have 15 supercharger lots in Singapore. Many more are coming. Let's get a closer look. Now that more borders are reopening in Singapore, we're going from the vaccinated travel lane, VTL, to the vaccinated travel framework, which means we will get the chance to drive Teslas and charge them in more countries around the world. So Singapore, we're very fortunate. We lead prop technology a bit. All of our superchargers are V3. That means they charge 250 kilowatts, which is really fast. That is about 200 miles or 300 kilometers in 15 minutes. In most other countries, majority of the superchargers are still V1 and V2. They charge up to 150 kilowatts. And typically, the peak charging rate runs from about 20 to 60, 70% of your battery. It slows down a lot more once it hits 80% of your battery. So bear that in mind when you look for superchargers in other countries. I know some friends who are going to Austin, we're going to LA, we're going to visit Europe or drive past a new Gigafactory in Berlin. Superchargers have different speeds in different countries. So these superchargers here, actually, how do you tell whether they're V1, V2, V3 versus by looking at them? I can't. If you do, please let me know. You can tell by looking at the supercharger locations on your Tesla console in your car. So they're very easy to use. When there's a Tesla, you just lift it up. You click the button over here and it will unlock the charge port. You open the charge port, you just slide it in. The good thing with using a Tesla supercharger, unlike many other public EV chargers, is that you don't need any other separate app. If you own a Tesla, you already have the Tesla app. So everything's integrated in the Tesla app. All you need to do is just plug and play. That's it. Come back in about half an hour when you're done charging. Sometimes even less. So that's how it works. These Tesla superchargers. I've heard, fun fact, that installing one of these supercharger stations can cost roughly about $100,000. And if you install like a normal AC charger that probably costs around five dollars to $10,000, that's what I've heard. Could be a bit less as well. With all these superchargers here, let's take a look at the other two. The charging speed is up to 250 kilowatts, but it doesn't mean it stays constant all the time. Another factor depends on how many other Teslas are here, because you may share the load, you may share the charge as well. And we've all heard the news already. The pay per kilowatt hour and idle fees are coming in in Singapore by 5th of April. What does that mean? That means when we pick this up and charge, we will start paying a rate. The rate will depend by country, and in some other countries, it also depends by peak capacity, time of use, location. I believe in Singapore, you'll probably see a relatively consistent rate for now, at least in the months to come, at least this year. That's my belief. And for idle fees, what do they mean? It means that when your Tesla is fully charged, fully charged means you set up to, let's say, 80% charge limit. Once it stops charging, it starts counting. So every minute, it will charge based on this table that you see from Tesla. Every minute it passes, 50 cents in Singapore, 50 Singapore cents. And if the supercharger is full, that means all three bays are occupied, it's one Singapore dollar per minute. The way it works, according to Tesla, is that idle fees kick in when the supercharger station is at least 50% capacity. So with three stalls, that means there needs to be at least two Teslas using two stalls for idle fees to start kicking in. If like right now there's no one and you're the only Tesla coming in, 
you can try, but I believe that there will not be an idle feed. Once you just unplug it and just put it back, as long as you leave the stall within five minutes, we will Tesla will waive the idle fees. How will you know that your car is fully charged? For Tesla owners, you get notifications from your Tesla app. So it will ping you just before you're fully charged and one more time when your car is fully charged. So come back down, unplug it, park it to another bay. They see so much parking space here at Waterway Point. It's huge. And then go back to whatever you were doing. So not ideal if you're watching a movie. What's the long-term solution? To me, the long-term solution is one day, autopilot full self-driving is good enough and that's Tesla's dream as well. Your car is fully charged, it unplugs by itself. You all remember the old snake connector where it tries to charge a link by itself? You saw in those old YouTube videos many years ago. That's still a pipe dream. But one day if that can happen, it just unplugs, your Tesla automatically moves to another empty vacant lot and other Teslas will drive themselves in here and charge. That is the dream. To make sure that you're ready for paid supercharging, Make sure that your latest credit card details are updated on the Tesla app. Sometimes you may have credit cards that expire. If that happens, you wonder, how come I'm suddenly locked out of supercharging? So I think there's a little bit of leeway with Tesla. If you come to a supercharger station, you don't have your credit card details and your low state of charge. You really need to charge. You will plug this and you plug in your car. It will likely charge. There's probably a threshold, just a little bit of an emergency buffer to charge you a little bit. But if you keep on doing it, you'll get locked out. That means you cannot charge on the supercharger anymore until you pay or insert your credit card details. So please do that before 5th of April. Elon Musk has said that eventually, Tesla wants to open up all supercharger to other EV brands. They've started pilots in Netherlands and I believe Norway also. In those occasions, Teslas do get preferential charging rates compared to other brand EVs, which makes sense because they've been supporting the company for so many years. But in Singapore, like many other countries, Tesla superchargers are right now exclusive only for Tesla owners. You can tell by looking at the markings down on the floor, down here. So down here you see Tesla customers only. This wording is a bit small, so sometimes other EV owners will actually come here and try to charge their EVs and they figure out how come it doesn't work yet. So that's a little bit of consumer education that needs to happen. Today in Singapore, 47% of all EVs in the country are Teslas. But you also see more non-Tesla EVs coming up in the months to come. Because by 2030, sales of pure ICE cars will be banned. So I believe by 2027, about 70% of all new cars sold will be EVs. That means that many people actually try to charge here. So be kind, be patient to other EV owners who are here. Most of the time, they really do not know that they can't charge. Because they go, they see the plug, it's the same CCS plug that you see in other fast chargers. See, in, in Singapore, like most of the world, this plug works for many EVs. It's not like the superchargers in the US where they got a proprietary plug. It's 7.30 a.m. now on a Saturday. You see our first Tesla behind me using the supercharger station already. Many more Tesla owners will be coming soon. Pongol is a large residential area and the government has plans to also build an IT hub. If you've been to Silicon Valley, you've seen a number of Teslas out there. It's insane. So this is a great location for Tesla supercharger. Talking about locations, some of you may be wondering, the west side of Singapore's map looks a little bit empty right now. And I couldn't agree more. If I had to guess or plan, like if I was Tesla, where would I create supercharger stations? My choice would be one, Sentosa. Could be in the east of Sentosa, like Sentosa Cove, the Quayside, or it could also be in the west, Resorts World Sentosa. Right now, a lot of our EV chargers are just three stalls, very small, yeah? If you go to other countries like US, or even in Shanghai, there are supercharger stations with 40 to 50 stalls. It's huge, it's insane. Can we have bigger Tesla superchargers in Singapore? I believe so. Personally, the biggest EV charging station I've seen is by SP at Singapore Zoo at Mandai in the multi-story car park. I believe there are eight EV chargers there. What's the biggest EV charging station you've seen in Singapore? Please let me know down in the comments and I would love to visit it. What can we do? I think Tesla can build larger supercharger station in tourist attractions, say Garden by the Bay, Resorts World Sentosa, Marina Bay Sand, or even Changi Airport. Those would be great locations for larger supercharger stations. Maybe more outdoor ones. We're waiting for East Coast Park, West Coast Park, Botanic Gardens, 
bring them on. So you're going to see many more superchargers in Singapore. We have five right now. There are so many more to come. With that, if you found this video useful, please click the like button. Hit subscribe to stay updated to more videos on Tesla. Take care and have a good weekend.